Hi there, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jackie and today in this video I am going to give you eight tips for creating sea glass mosaic art. And the reason I'm doing this is that I've been doing sea glass mosaic art for many many years and I started my YouTube channel three years ago and people have been following me on YouTube. And just as a side note, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and for watching my videos and liking my videos and sending me comments and sending me pictures of things that you've created. It's all been very encouraging for me and it's kept me going. It keeps me coming back to say, yeah, I'm gonna create another video. So I have gotten a fair amount of feedback from people about what do I do about this or what do I do about that? Because this whole sea glass mosaic art thing, let's face it, it is not your typical art. It's not like painting. People have been painting for centuries. But the sea glass mosaic art, the stuff that I do is kind of my own spin on sea glass mosaic art. But sea glass mosaic art itself is something that's fairly new to people. So today I'm going to give you eight tips on things that will hopefully give you a bit of a push and a bit of an oomph and how to keep going when you're thinking, I don't know what to do next. So join me for this one. So here you are, you love going to the beach, you love collecting sea glass, and every time you go, you pick up a few pieces and you bring them home. Well, eventually you get a collection and you've got tons and tons of sea glass and you're thinking, what am I gonna do with this? And then you see someone like me on YouTube creating art with their sea glass and you decide, I'm gonna give it a try. So you give it a try and you realize, ooh, this is kind of different, how do I do this? So the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is just get started. So have you ever heard the expression, how do you eat a whale? The answer is one bite at a time. Well, how do you create a sea glass mosaic? The answer is one piece at a time. So you look at a piece this size and you think, how did you ever even get started? Well, I'll tell you, it is kind of hard. Sometimes I'll be starting a new piece and I'll have pieces all laid out. And eventually I just have to say, Jackie, just do it. Glue on your first piece. And once you glue on one piece, then two piece, and eventually you get hundreds of pieces and you have yourself a sea glass mosaic. And then I do another one. And it just eventually adds up. So sometimes you just have to say, don't hesitate, glue on that first piece. So tip number two, don't try too, too hard to make the pieces fit. I often say that doing a sea glass mosaic is like doing a puzzle, but it's like doing a puzzle. It isn't doing a puzzle. In doing a puzzle, there's one right piece that has to fit perfectly with the piece beside it. Whereas in mosaic, what happens is that your eye fills in the blank so if your, if your pieces don't fit super tight or super close together, your eye is going to fill in the blanks. So don't fret too, too much about it. Let me show you what I mean. So if you look up close at these pieces of sea glass, you can see they don't fit super, super tight together. There's a fair amount of space between them and the spaces between them aren't necessarily even. But then when you pull back and you look at the piece as a whole, your eye fills in all those blanks and the magic of mosaic happens. And this is what to me is so intoxicating about mosaic art. What looks one way up close looks totally different when you step back from it. Which brings me to tip number three, which is to step back from your work. So here I am working away on something. I've got it on my table and I'm like, oh, I don't think this is working. Like what is wrong here? So I clean off all the pieces that haven't been glued on. I stand up, take my piece and set it up against the wall and then walk back across the room and take a look at it. And then I say, yes, it's working or no, it's not, and I'll make the changes I need to make. So tip number four, take a picture. 
So if you're like me and you walk around with your phone in your pocket, you can easily whip out your phone, take a picture of what you're doing, or take a picture of different arrangements, and then you can figure out what's going to work the best. Because there's something about looking at your piece on the screen of your phone that really does help you see whether or not it's working. So just for example, in this piece, Child's Play, I was really struggling with the village here and I couldn't figure out how I want the houses arranged. So I took a whole bunch of pictures to see which arrangement was going to work the best. Let me show you what I mean. So looking at all those different possibilities for arrangements of the houses helped me decide on this arrangement. And I think it came out just like I wanted it. So tip number five, take a break, especially if you're getting frustrated. So here I am, I've got my tea, I've got one of my favorite books, little plug for my book, Windows to the Past, Creating Sea Glass Mosaic Art. And I'm just gonna sit and read for a bit. And then when I go back at it, I'll be refreshed and ready to take a fresh look at things and go again. Tip number six is that you can always make a change. So don't fret too much about getting it just perfect because you can always go back and make an adjustment or make a change down the road. I'm gonna show you an example. Because I did this piece, I hung it on the wall and it's been hanging there for a while and every time I look at it, I feel like, oh, it's not quite working. This piece right here, this driftwood, I put it in and then I have these pieces of kelp coming up from it, but it's just not working for me. So I'm going to make a change. And it's only after hanging on the wall for a while that I'm deciding, yeah, it's not working, I'm gonna make a change. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I brought this piece over to my table. I have my tray of brown sea glass and my tray of green sea glass. And I want to just take this piece of driftwood off of here and replace it with sea glass. So I have my glass scraper and my tweezers and I have my quick seal kitchen and bath adhesive caulk to glue the sea glass back on. So this is just a matter of using whatever tools you need to pry off the piece that's on there. Because working with this silicone, it does come off. So I've got my tweezers and I'm going to pry off this piece of driftwood. It might take a little bit of work, and I'm hoping I don't break the piece of driftwood because I quite like it and I will, damn it, I broke the piece of driftwood. Sorry for my bad language there. I like that piece of driftwood and I was thinking I would use it again in another piece. Chances are that won't happen with your sea glass, but driftwood is a bit more fragile. So I've ruined it. I'm not going to be able to reuse it. So now I'm going to use my tweezers and my, my little glass scraper there to scrape off all the excess silicone. So there you go, I got all that silicone off the glass and I decided I'm going to take this green piece off as well. And I'm just going to fill in this area with brown and then I think I'll just put a little bit of green there as well. And I will see if I am much happier with the piece. If something happens then and I'm not happy with it, I can just redo it again. So there you go. I think that does the trick. I'm much happier with that. Now I'll just hang it up on the wall and see if it works. So as much as I like that piece of driftwood, it really wasn't working in this sea glass mosaic. I'm much happier with it now. 
So, tip number seven, if you're looking at something and you're thinking, oh, I'm not quite sure if this is working, maybe it just needs an extra little touch so you can add some pieces on top and then it adds a little bit more interest and a little bit more depth to your piece. Let me show you some examples of where I've done that. In this piece in particular, I've done a lot of layering. Layering can add a lot of detail to your sea glass mosaic. So tip number eight, my last tip of the day, just keep going. I have to show you a good example of this because this is by far one of my favorite pieces. I don't know why, it just really appeals to me. But I have to tell you, I really struggled with it. I set this window up on a table in my house and I had sea glass pieces set on it and every time I walked by I would fiddle around with the sea glass pieces and I was just stuck. And then I would do a little bit and I'd get stuck again. I'd do a little bit more and I'd get stuck again. It took me forever to get this piece done. But I did eventually get it done. And by the time I finished it, I was so pleased with it. And I just love it. So much so that I made another version of it, which is slightly different, but the same type of theme. So I really encourage you, if you're working away at Sea Glass Mosaic Art and you're getting discouraged, just keep going. Eventually it'll get done and hopefully you'll be really happy with the result. So I really hope you found these tips today helpful and it gives you some encouragement to start Sea Glass Mosaic Art if you haven't or to keep on going with your art. And I would love to see pictures of what you've done. So until next time, I really hope you get out to the beach and happy sea glass hunting.